In this lesson, we're going to talk about working with dates in Nine. Short info, other than in the other lessons from now on, I'm going to share all the base files publicly in my Nime Hub space. If you want to know what the Nime Hub is, please wait for one of the future lessons where I explain it in much more detail. But right now, you need to know this. It's a sharing platform for Nime workflows hosted by Nime themselves. You'll find the link to the files for this lesson in the video description. All right, dates. Let's dive right in. We're going to cover three different use cases. We want to find out how fast we pay and therefore calculate the difference between invoice and payment date. We want to know how much invoices we get each day and we want to know how many purchase orders a buyer releases each month. For examples one and two, we have a new data set which you can find on the Nime Hub. So let's jump into Nime to find out how it's done. All right, so here we are and here you can see basically are two base files that we have. We start with this one here with the payment data. So we drag and drop it, drop it onto the canvas. Immediately the Excel reader gets at it and pops up in its configuration mode. And as you can see, we have basically two date columns in here. One is called invoice date and one is called payment out date. And we have round about a thousand rows of data. So let's quickly label that and we call it import payment data from Excel like this. All right. So we can execute this already. And you see we have thousand rows of data and here you can see our results table. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the difference between this column, the base column, and this column. So Nime, of course, has a wonderful node for that. And that node is called date and time difference. So let's quickly look it in the node repository, date and time difference. There it was already, date and time difference here under other data types, time series manipulate, so let's just select this one, double click to add. And the base is the invoice date. And the second column is the payment out date. And the granularity that we want, it's not hours, minutes or something like this. We want days, all right? And the new column will be labeled date and time difference, okay? So let's just quickly label it. We call it, um, we call it calc, the difference calc, calc days from invoice to payment. All right. We press F7 to execute. And now you can see for a thousand rows in an instant, we get this information. So like from 25th of January was paid on 20th of May. That's 115 days or 24th of January was paid on 3rd of February, that is 10 days. So that gives you a good insight how well, for example, your payment term data is negotiated and how fast it gets paid and if the impact of longer payment terms gets used or not. So example number two, we want to know how many invoices by date we receive and we simply do that by a very simple group by node. So we basically will just select um, the date column, the invoice date, which is in our case, the assumed booking date, group number of invoices by date. So let's open up the good old group by node. And if you have not seen our lessons about the group by nodes, it is linked up above here. F6. And we want the invoice date. We want to group on the invoice date and the aggregation we want to have. Well, we could take all kinds of things. Let's just, let's assume, um, I mean, that's each one item, one document. So we just say company, but not first in this one, but count. We want to count how many invoices we get at 
each single day. And we press F7 to execute, and here you can see it basically. So you see on 1st of January it was 10, then 41, then 30, then 22, and we can do all kinds of things. For example, when it comes to goods receipt bookings, we can do all kinds of things. Once again, this new data set is available when you download the workflow from the NIME Hub. It's here in this data folder. Now we use our good old trusted friend, the payment term optimization file, which has our PVO base data. We drag and drop it onto the canvas. You see it opens up here. This is exactly what we want. All we need to do is label it and we call it import PVO base data. We select it, press F7 to execute. We have imported a thousand rows here of data. Um, the first thing we want to do is that we have currently our dates in a string file. As you can see here, PO date, this little s indicates it's a string. So let's make this a um, string to date and time. That's this one. Reconfigure it. And basically the string we want to convert is this one. We did this yesterday already. So we choose the scheme for or the locale English US. We select here that we only have dates in there and then we let NIME guess the format. And that looks pretty good. All right. So let's quickly label it. Convert PO date to date format. F7. And if we now look at the table, we see it is a date. So the next thing we've want, we want to do here is once again, um, let's, if we want to count the number of POs that every single buyer does in a month, we maybe just want the last name. So we do a similar thing than yesterday. So let's use the string manipulation. I will link the video up here where I explained it in more detail. So let me just quickly go through the formula we already used yesterday. That will be this one. Buyer here start at point number zero. And here we have index of chars. Um, we want once again the buyer column and we want to search for the comma and we want to overwrite our buyer column. All right, F7. Now we only have last names only buyers last names is the label here all right and now we want to do some um, pivoting oh no we want to extract basically um the um from each single date we now now that it is a, a date column as you can see here we want to extract the date and time date extract date and time fields oops that's wrong let's just go here we want to have the month with name we want en us as a locale so let's just go here that we have the english dates and then extract months name and let's say ENUS so we know which format execute now you see August December October October you see it now here for each and every one and at the end we want to do a pivoting once again finally we want to have a pivoting node that we add here and what do we want to do we want to group by the month name in this case we want to pivot the buyer and we want the po number but this time not the mean or the sum we want to count the number of po's we choose pivot name here so we have a speaking column name all right now and if we just forgot to label let's just label this pivot number of po's by buyer and month and if we now execute 
we should see on FD little pivot table here, we see the month names here, we see the number of POs here, and we see the buyer names here. And that was our third example. Once again, you can download those files over at the NIME hub that is linked in the description down below. Awesome. Now you have learned a few tricks to work with numbers, texts, and dates. Next lessons will be about the many sources for additional learning of NIME. So question to you, would you like to build more workflows or would you rather prefer node introductions? Let me know in the comments down below. We have achieved quite a bit in these few lessons, by the way. So pat yourself on the shoulder. You have already come very far, but it only gets better. So soon we start with module three, which covers advanced nine concepts. If you don't want to miss out, click like and subscribe. See you in the next video. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.